another video camera in settings. I'm gonna just try to log back in and see what happens. So I'll log out and come back. <laughs> this is not working. Hey, Mark, are you okay if I just shut my computer down and then log back in? It's probably going to take me a couple of minutes. I can't. That's good. Okay. Okay, uh, through quotes. Okay, sounds like it is recording. So I'm going to call this regular meeting of council to order. First, I'd like to acknowledge this meeting is taking place on the traditional territory of the Sinawas First Nation. First item on our agenda is adoption of agenda, just noting that this is an amended agenda. And uh, so I'll just simply make the motion that the March 9th, 2022 regular council meeting agenda be adopted as presented. Do I have a seconder, second by Councillor Savage. Any discussion on the agenda? It's a rather short one this evening. Um, <clears throat> so I will move to call in the motion. All those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. That now takes us on to item seven of our agenda. So the consent agenda. So there's two items listed for seven A and B, anything needing to be removed. Um, you would like one to be removed, Councillor Gusselbart? Okay, so I'll just simply make the motion that the recommendations listed for items one, or sorry, seven A and B in the consent agenda be approved as seconder to that. Second by Councillor Savage. Call the question, all those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. Oops. Okay, that takes us on to public input periods through to staff. Is anybody registered this evening for public input? No, no one has registered. Okay, thank you. Um, so it takes us on to nine A of our agenda. So bylaw number 266, that the district and Lance will miscellaneous fees 
and charges bylaw number 26 2004 amendment bylaw number 266 2022 be given first, second, third readings. Is there a seconder to this? Second by Councillor Wilson. Um, discussion on the motion through the council. So through to Councillor Wilson's seconder and through the rest of the council. Okay, hearing none. Oh, Councillor Savage, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah, there seems to be a theme. I'd just like to understand this, please. Uh, running through many of these fee increases, uh, it looks like double counting or double charging. So one way to explain this is a student has a lawn mowing business. He charges $20 an hour. He does a customer's lawn for four hours and the client gives him $80. But then the student says, well, on top of the $80 for my wages, uh, there's a service fee for the time I spent cutting the lawn. And the customer, I think, would be very puzzled over that. So you'll see on the first item, the memorial tree installation is increasing from $150 to $300. And one of the reasons cited is staff time to put in the tree, but my understanding is staff wages are already paid through taxes, completely covered by taxes. So is this not double charging? And through the chair to staff, please, there are many examples in these fee increases which involve the same principle of what appears to be double charging. So can staff please explain why residents are being charged for staff time in these service fees when staff has already been paid through taxation? Through you, your worship, to Councillor Savage. So essentially, um, in, in most municipalities, there is a balance between charging user fees and the costs incurred for a service. So in this particular situation, a person who wants to make a memorial tree installation would be, be paying for the full cost of that installation at the $300. If uh, a portion of those fees are essentially, um, I guess, not recovered through the fee, then the remaining taxpayers would be covering the cost of those fees. So the attempt here is for users to pay the full cost of this service. And as a follow-up, please, where does this money go, this portion of service fee that covers staff costs, where does this money go? This uh, money would be reported in other fees and services as revenue to offset the cost. So essentially, in total, the cost of installing a new memorial installation tree would be approximately $300 and we would be recovering revenue of that equivalent amount in our revenues. But this charge for staff time would not be paid to staff, they've already been paid. So it goes to covering other items then. I mean, that is a very, very granular analysis so it should offset increases in taxation in, in future years so essentially if you have taxpayers paying this part of um, the the cost if you can say that then it should put less of a pressure on the tax rate increase and and we're talking i mean in terms of overall dollars on an annual basis here you're, you're not talking large dollars here like I haven't gone through and done an analysis of how many tree installations there are, but uh, I would go to imagine we probably have three to five memorial tree installations in a year. Oh yeah, but it, it's uh, my point being that there's many service fees that include staff time. For yes. example, I believe the quarterly water yes. service fees, do they not also include a component of staff time? I'm sure they do in the amount of fees. So essentially, uh, Your Worship, through you to Councillor Savage, the, the effort here is to charge the full cost of providing this service 
to somebody who wants to donate a memorial tree. If council so wishes to subsidize that and set that fee at an alternative rate, that is council's will and council can certainly do that. Yeah, no, no, that's not my point. My point is all these other service fees like water service fees, they also include staff time. So I'm wondering generally with all these fees, there's another one in our, on the agenda with respect to uh, FOI request too. All I'm saying is generally, why is it that when staff wages are already paid that a second charge is given for purportedly to cover staff costs, but they've already been paid, that's all. It's just the principle of it. The, well, if, if I can answer that, I mean, at the end of the day, we balance the budget. Our revenues are equal to our expenditures in a municipality. So if you've got revenues being recovered through this fee, then theoretically, there should be less revenue required from taxpayers. So, so it should offset what we recover from the taxpayers. Yep, all right, well, thank you. Uh, I still see it as double charging. I guess my only point is, is that if you're careful with your uh, income, you're careful with your expenses, that's all. So now with the water rate increases, uh, just some comments here. Uh, the water user rates are designed so, so the lower uh, volumes of water at a lower rate, uh, they're at a lower rate than the higher consumption volumes. So the more water you use, the higher rate you pay. Uh, this is all geared to encourage water conservation and punish using too much water. This is a great idea if the water has been used as a cushion to your uh, supply and the idea of preserving nature and so on. However, this whole idea is a fallacy because getting individual users to save water creates a water surplus, but the surplus is not used as a safety a cushion or preserve the environment. It's uh, to get the surplus is, or to get you know, uh, current residents with water problems uh, the surplus to date has been 100% for fueling new development. So I just wanted to point out this contradiction of uh, current residents sacrificing. Uh, so it creates a surplus for nothing but new development. So uh, that's why I'm opposed to these uh, rates that are used to encourage water conversation because the sacrifice isn't going towards what residents uh, think it is. So current residents sacrifice and new development benefits. That's, that's my point. So I'm not sure I fully believe in this idea of, of forcing residents into less and less water usage when it's not for uh, purposes that benefit residents and you know at this rate uh, residents will be bathing in teacups and having five foot <clears throat> councillor savage i'm going to ask you to wrap it up just i'm not tracking exact speaking times because there was some answers provided by director here but um okay, thank you i'll leave it at that. on in time First round. director here i see your hand was up and i noticed councillor wilson's hand was up as well thank you their uh response Director here. So, something. Your Worship, through through you to um, in, in response to Councillor Savage's comments, there is no surplus created in the water utility. Essentially, these rates were um, to to begin with. These rates were accounted for in the financial plan that was approved by Council for one, and it reflects the costs in the water utility plus the contribution to reserves, which is put in for capital spending, which is along the lines of what is required for, for asset management purposes in, in the water utility. 
So I, I just wanted to clarify that there is no surplus being created in the water utility as a result of these rates. These rates are required to operate the utility and make a contribution to capital so that you can take care of your capital infrastructure in the municipality. So uh, Councillor Wilson, I see your hand was up. I, uh, I just thought that I, would, I think I understood what Director Hare was saying. I understand um, the report by staff is that the cost to put it, for example, to put a tree in the ground is $300. We're not asking, we're not charging residents more. We're just simply putting the cost onto the individual that's planting that memorial tree. Otherwise, the cost is still $300. They were previously only charged $150. Therefore, we were asking residents within the community to contribute that other $150. Now, all of the cost is borne by the individual planting the tree. So there's no double charging here. So the analogy of, um, you know, the, the lawn mowing analogy doesn't doesn't work with this uh, with this particular example. With all due respect, thank you. Okay, Councillor Gusbrack. Well, although I generally agree with these um, <clears throat> miscellaneous fee increase, um, with respect to memorial trees, uh, I think the rate instead of three hundred dollars should be fifteen hundred dollars, because planting the tree is is probably the easiest part of the whole process. You have to prune the tree. You have to water the tree. Uh, I live be, uh, behind Copley Park. And in the last uh, six months, there's been about three trees planted. Uh, they've got gator bags around them. They have to be filled up. Uh, they have to be pruned. They have to be protected. Uh, there's been some vandalism. Uh, this, is, this memorial tree uh, service is an additional service provided by the district. I think we should stop it. Uh, what I see happening are places like Huddlestone Park, uh, the what used to be an open field for soccer, baseball, frisbee, and other sports, uh, has now been crowded out by a number of trees. Uh, I express my concerns to uh, Director Spears, uh, who responded to me and and indicated that. Uh, 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 that he uh, takes uh, great care in trying to place them along the boundaries of a park like Copley Park uh, and around uh, walkways. But I'm still concerned that we do this. I mean, there's other sorts of memorial things. Uh, there's memorial benches down by the beach. Why don't we encourage that? How about a memorial bus stop? There's several places in the, uh, Lansville where we could have a bus stop specifically on Phillip Road. Why don't we uh, uh, create a policy to look at other types of memorials that don't uh, crowd out our parks with, although they're eventually beautiful trees, uh, and I suspect some of them are, are uh, uh, native, um, it's, it's taking over the space. Um, you know, we're gonna have a, a, a thousand acre park in the foothills. Let's put some memorial benches up there. So um, I realize that what I'm asking for is a policy and I'll bring forward a motion uh, later in the term for that. Uh, but um, I don't think the $300 goes anywhere near uh, covering the cost. But uh, as Director Hare said, uh, this is to try and balance out the cost the watering, the planting, the pruning, the raking the leaves uh, with uh, making the taxpayers uh, cover that whole cost. Thank you. Okay, any additional speakers? I have a comment or two, but. All right, so uh, before we go second round, Councillor Savage, I'll have a stab at this. And I'm not gonna try and digress too much into this memorial tree business, but. Um, the, the one thing I would say around that is it's definitely something that's very affordable for people if they choose to do some kind of memorial um, within the district. So it's uh, significantly cheaper than a memorial bench, which comes in, I think, the price tag of $2,500. So you're, you're, I think for a lot of people, you're putting it out of reach. Um, 
to have something that would maybe be meaningful to go and visit um, from time to time. Uh, I, I think, you know, if there's a concern, and I'm not aware of any significant concerns in the parks at this point, but if there is a concern, um, you know, perhaps a policy around uh, how we place trees, similar to how we uh, or where we place memorial benches is in order. Um, you know, there's only so many benches that have been approved uh, for benches. So maybe the same policy, there needs to be a similar for trees to help guide the director, or the director of public works and where to put trees and how many. And, and when we reach a saturation point in a park such as Huddlestone, historically within Huddlestone, even in itself, um, for a number of years, there was a, it was a significant struggle to move a couple of memorial trees around the cenotaph. And, and fortunately, those had been moved and uh, because they, they seemed to get in the way of uh, holding the, the Remembrance Day ceremony. So anyways, um, I think $300 is a fair amount. I, I do understand, I think, what Councillor Savage was driving at, which is, you know, we've already, you know, through taxation, we're paying uh, public works staff uh, to do a job. I, my query would be if, you know, with a $300 fee is, um, would staff consider hiring uh, a gardener to come in to plant trees or, or is this something they're just taking on as an add-on duty? And, uh, you know, whether it's a three trees a year or five trees a year to plant, they just put that on their work list and, um, and maybe there's overtime paid out or what have you, just so all the other um, tasks get completed. So, um, so Director Hare, I see your hand is up and you probably have a little response to my comment. So go ahead. My only comment, Your Worship, was that most of the increase in costs that is reflected here is in external costs of basically having a plaque purchased. And um, I mean, there was some, some increase, but minor portion was related to labor costs. Uh, most of those labor costs were captured in the previous $150. There's it uh, more or less in the increases related to costs paid to other parties. And the devil's in the details. So thanks for that. Um, so Councillor Savage, you're next. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, a few quick things, please. Uh, I agree with Council Gasselbrack. The memorial trees are, have, are quite problematic for many other reasons, but that's not our topic tonight. We'll cover that another time. And uh, with the surplus, what I'm referring to is a surplus of water, not a surplus of money. We have a finite amount of well water. And if we're preserving that well water, it should be for community or current residents benefit, their benefit, and not to benefit solely new development. That was my only point. Now getting on to the excessive nuisance abatement uh, through chair to staff, this punitive $500 charge is levied against the person doing all the complaining. Is that correct? Uh, Your Worship, through you to Councillor Savage, I'm going to actually ask uh, Director Coates to respond to that because I'm not fully familiar with the good neighbor bylaw itself, which drives this fee. Uh, I believe. Uh, Director Coates may be more familiar with that than I am. Otherwise, uh, I can answer that at a later time. Hey, go ahead, Director Coates. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, some of these fees, um, and particularly this one, it's more of a housekeeping matter. Council turned their mind to the good neighbor bylaw um, last year. And within the bylaw, it defines what an excessive nuisance service call is and when it gets paid under what circumstances and how the warning notice goes to the person before uh, it is assessed. So this was uh, allowed, you know, a, a period of time where we didn't have it in the bylaw uh, to uh, charge the fee and we haven't even sent it on to the RCMP to report out to us yet. So it's again, part of this public education uh, your core question was, who would who would pay it? And so it's uh, in the bylaw, and we're talking about bylaw 200. It talks about the what an excessive nuisance call is, and it's 
um, includes but not limited to the cost and expenses incurred while responding to a nuisance service call for the purpose of abating a nuisance conduct activity or condition. So it could, could be police, district employees' salaries, uh, fire department, district equipment and vehicles, administration costs, and it goes on for a series of things, but that's well defined in the bylaw. And then within uh, the bylaw itself uh, starts at section 57. It talks about where a bylaw officer, RCMP or district employee is required to respond to a property for more than one nuisance service call within a 24 hour period or more than three nuisance service calls within a 12 month period, the landowner. So that's that was your question, who, who would it go to? The landowner may be liable to pay an excessive nuisance abatement fee for each additional nuisance service call responded to at the same property within a 12 month period following the date of the notice. Now it defines the landowner as the person who is the registered owner on title under the Land Title Act and in relation to the common property of a strata or corporation includes the, the strata corporation. So I mentioned earlier, and I'll just remind you of that, that it, before it's uh, imposed, there's a written notice sent to the landowner describing in detail the nature of the nuisance conduct, the activity, and advising the landowner that excessive nuisance abatement fees will be imposed for each additional nuisance service but, call. But both the went. person complaining and the target of the complaint are landowners. So who pays, the person doing all the complaining or the target of the complaint? I'm not understanding why you would think a complainant, uh, it's the district that's complaining if, our resources are being expended going to the same house multiple times. Um, the, it's, it's being sent, it's a notice that's being sent to the landowner. But if a resident is making untold amount of frivolous calls, targeting a neighbor, that's why I'm asking, what is there to curtail them from continually uh, instigating all these costs? I'm, I'm not understanding. Anyway, you've, answered, you've answered my question. So it's Thank the, you. It's the yeah. talk. So I, I don't agree with that. And uh, through another question through the staff, please. Uh, Himalayan blackberries are classified as a weed in the good neighbor bylaw. There are unmanaged blackberries throughout Lanceville on district property. So if a resident complains about them three times and they are not all removed, then will the district be charged this $500 penalty? Um, sorry, um, I, again, I'm, I'm not understanding your, your question, but the no, uh, the district would not be charged and I don't think there's anything that compels the district to go out and remove things. But the, the letter of the, this law says that they would be. The, the, the good neighbor bylaw says that, you know, any owner of property that has unmanaged weeds on it, like blackberries are classified as a weed and the definition uh, of this bylaw, I'm just, I'm not being frivolous here. I'm, <laughs> pointing out that it doesn't make sense to single out residents to charge them. So, for, for, cl for clarity, there is a difference between a, a penalty, a ticket uh, for a bylaw offense and an excessive nuisance service call. So I, I, I started to read the excessive nuisance abatement fee and, and the definition of nuisance, but uh, you know, council has adopted this bylaw. Um, I could, I'm not quite sure I can do it at this point for you, whether you would like to look at the bylaw again, but you debated these issues when you adopted the bylaw, before you adopted the bylaw. Oh, but now we're putting this formally as a fee that would be authorized that I would be against it. And, and uh, to uh, chair to staff, please. Another question is, is it each 
time there's three complaints, it's another $500 for the target, or is it limited just once? So for example, if someone phones three times, uh, the target is charged the $500, then the same neighbor complains the next three times, they'd be charged another $500. So it keeps adding up for every three complaints. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, for clarity, it, again, it's, it's not based on complaints. It's based on staff attendance. Uh, the RSMP decide when they attend and whether they're being, once they're there, whether it was a legitimate complaint or not, and whether they, you know, whether it was a nuisance. Um, so we, we need to keep the distinction between what is a excessive nuisance service call and what is a complaint and a bylaw enforcement uh, ticket or an MTI ticket. And just to remind council, uh, back in March, 2021, council received a report about the good neighbor bylaw and it included you know, a description of this. It said, when the bylaw content has been finalized, staff would bring forward amendments of related bylaws for consideration of readings and adoption. The miscellaneous, and it gave a, you know, a list of three different ones. One was the miscellaneous fees and charges bylaw to establish excessive nuisance abatement fee. And it had right there in brackets, $500 each additional nuisance service call. Uh, it, it also went on to talk about the MTI amendment and the bylaw notice enforcement amendment, which will be coming forward to council soon. Uh, but it's this is just a, this is staff fulfilling on council's bylaw they adopted last year. It's not here to for council to debate uh, the good neighbor bylaw again. If council wishes to do that, we would need a motion to council. Thank you. Yes, I understand that perfectly. So I've made my points that I think this will be very unfair to people that are targeted with it. So at any rate, I won't be supporting this just because of the double charges throughout it that it's basic to me if a, if a, a charge is included, if a cost is included that's not real, then it doesn't give a real picture of the true cost. And if staff costs are being included in the total cost, that's not a real cost because they're already been paid through taxation. So that seems a simple principle to me. So anyway, I've made my point, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. So is there any additional speakers before I call the question? Sorry, I just gotta jump back to my agenda. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move then to call in questions. So all those in favor and opposed, noting that uh, Councillor Savage is opposed, uh, uh, first, second, third readings carry. So now it will be, we are moving on to 9B. So this is bylaw number 270, that the District of Lanceville phase three sewer, sanitary sewer collection system establishment bylaw number 143, 2017 amendment open bracket boundary adjustment, close bracket, bylaw number 270-2022 be adopted. So this is an adoption. So we also oh, have second by Councillor Savage. So it's that adoption. So there's no debate on this. We just moved to call in the question. So all those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. It takes us on to bylaw number 301 that the District of Lanceville 2022 alternate municipal tax collection Scheme bylaw number 301 2022 be given first, second, and third readings. So seconder to that, second by Councillor Savage. Discussion on this bylaw through to Council. So as the seconder, Councillor Savage, anything? And then I'll open it up to the rest of the Council. Okay, and through the rest of the Council. Okay, hearing or seeing nothing, I'm going to move to calling the questions. So all those in favor? And opposed, that is carried unanimously. That takes us on to item 9D, which is bylaw number 303 that the District of Lansdale Regional Parks and Trails Parcel Tax and Assessment Rule Preparation Bylaw number 5627, repeal bylaw number 303 2022, be given first, second, third readings. We have a seconder to that, second by Councillor Savage. Discussion on this bylaw. As uh, a seconder, Councillor Savage. Go for it, and then I'll open it up to the rest of the council. Uh, yes, uh, 
Thank you. Uh, the RDM has had just an excellent parks and trails programs for decades. And back in the 90s, the RDM had the force to aggressively assemble land and trails when the prices were, were uh, much lower, obviously. So this is how you build up your trail systems. It's done over many, many decades. And uh, we're bearing the fruit now of all the work that was done 20, 25 years ago by the RDM. So uh, they've just had an excellent record of parks and trails. And I just want to point out that this should also be applied to Lampsville. This is the time to start trails is now. Yes, it's slow going. You get a little piece here, a little piece there. But over the decades, that's how you get your trail system. And we should be acquiring a piece of trail in every single subdivision of three or more additional lots. So I'm going to fully support it. Thank you. Okay. Additional speakers, so Councillor Gusper, if you wish. Thank you, yes. Uh, I sat through the discussions at the RDN table uh, when this came to the RDN, and the, the whole theory behind this was to provide a more equitable uh, taxation rather than a simple parcel tax uh, on, uh, uh, on each property. So this equi more equitable distribution was 50% of the assessment uh, within a community, the BC assessment, and 50% based on population. Now, as it turns out that for 2022, uh, Lanceville's uh, portion will actually be a bit more, uh, not by much, but as we go on in the 2023 to 2026 financial period at the RDN, that will decrease uh, because uh, of the greater population growth within the municipalities of Nanaimo, Parksville, and Qualicum, which will have and continue to outstrip what's happening either here in Lanceville or in the other electoral districts. So this will work to our advantage uh, over the, uh, the, uh, the, the short and, and uh, uh, medium term. Thank you. Okay, any additional speakers on this item? Okay, hearing none, I will move to calling the question. All those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. That takes us on to 9E, which is bylaw number 304 that the District of Lansville Freedom of Information and Protection Privacy Bylaw number 109-2014 Amendment Bylaw number 304-2022 be given first, second, and third readings. The seconder to that, second by Councillor Wilson, discussion on the motion. So through to you, Councillor Wilson, if you wish, and then I'll open up to the rest of the council. So uh, through the rest of the council, Okay, Councillor Savage, go ahead. Uh, thank you, through Chair to staff, is there currently an application fee now? And if so, what is it, please? I'll just jump in there. Uh, no, this was, as the report mentions, this was new legislation brought in by the province. So what we currently have is the uh, processing uh, fees rate. And that's established by the province through a regulation. It sets a maximum amount it, uh, that we can charge for the processing. It was the province who brought it in. Uh, I think their release was, uh, they put out, I, I, they brought it in through the legislation as reported in the report in the fall. And they put out a release in January 2022, uh, saying that the edit, uh, you know, the amendment had received assent November 25th, and as part of this, the government introduced a $10 fee for general freedom of information requests. Uh, we stated very clearly in the report that this is a very nominal fee; it's in no way reflects the cost that it cost the taxpayer for the district to process 
fees, but it is a non-refundable fee and it would have to accompany applications. So the, I understand the process and fees, that's hourly rates and so on and the like, but what I'm asking is this application fee, is this a brand new thing or was there previously something called an application fee? And if so, how much? And, and sorry if I wasn't clear, what I was trying to explain is that the province did not bring that into the legislation until this fall. And then they put out a release saying it got a cent November 25th. So there was never anything in the legislation or in the regulation to refer to a $10 fee until that time. Great, thank you. So this is uh, the maximum set for the provincial government. Uh, it doesn't mean one has to charge it. It just means if you do charge it, you can charge up to that amount. And uh, um, I believe it will discourage people applying for an FOI. Sometimes people apply for multiple FOIs related to the same topic. Each time they'll have to pay the $10. And uh, so I think it'll be something that discourages people to do the FOI. And I think it's a very useful tool in democracy for residents. So I'd be opposed to charging anything, especially if they, uh, it was just something that's done and there's nothing found and they're paying $10 for nothing found. And I don't believe there's that many FOIs done, so it doesn't add up to much, but I can see it discouraging uh, people from doing it. That's why I'd be a, opposed to it. It doesn't add up to much, yet it does add up to the individual doing it. So. I don't want to see people discouraged from it. So I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Um, I just had a quick comment. Uh, through to Director Coates, uh, my understanding is that uh, FOI requests would most likely cost more than $10 and, and the charge that's passed on to the person requesting the FOI, $10. Is that correct or incorrect? I'm not sure what you mean. They, they're if they're not if they're not applying for their personal information, uh, which for us, you know, for the health field, uh, a lot of their requests are personal, or yes, for the yeah. policing, a lot of it's personal. Uh, for local government, very there's not a lot of it that is personal. Uh, so the the ten dollar fee does not apply if it's for personal reasons. Uh, the fee that is charged, uh, that we're proposing to be charged in this bylaw would be $10 to make the application. And then the other fees would apply. And so okay. the other fees are set in the regulation and we've adopted it in the, or council has adopted it in the bylaw. And it talks about the first three hours of search being free. And so staff will search for three, up to three hours and not, pass anything along. After that, it's $7.50 for each 15 minutes of time spent. Uh, then there's other fees, you know, there's fees like uh, the time spent uh, compiling the, the documents for release. There's, uh, we can't uh, charge for our time spent severing the document, uh, but we can charge for, you know, postage or that, that type of fee. So yes, there's definitely other fees that would apply, but this is a get it in the door uh, $10 for each one coming in, uh, except for personal information. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. Uh, through the rest of council, any additional questions, clarification before I call the question? Okay, hearing or seeing nothing, I'm gonna move to call in questions. So all those in favor and opposed? That's, uh, are you opposed, Councillor Savage? Yeah, okay, it's noting Councillor Savage is opposed. It's uh, Carry. Um, so that takes us on to um, next item, which is uh, item 12. So this is Mayor Council verbal updates. So we'll uh, go to Councillor Wilson, Councillor Proctor, Councillor Gusselbrock. Thank you. Nothing uh, this week. Okay, Councillor Savage. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is just through to staff, please. Uh, this is somewhat of a timely matter. 
Uh, my apologies, but I forget if and when I brought this up to staff or if the mayor did, but uh, the district is in the process of buying a new five ton uh, dump truck and Lanceville's Peterbilt in our industrial park due to worldwide supply chain problems quickly sold out their 2022 stock and won't have their new inventory of trucks until 2023. So is it possible to postpone the purchase of the dump truck until 2023 so a local business can have a chance to bid? Uh, that also means the warranty and maintenance business could stay in Lanceville as well. And sorry, I forget if this was brought up or not. I think it was before. So is there an update on that? And would you need a council motion for this, please? Your Worship. Um... We'll have to uh, we'll have to have uh, Director Spears to respond to that. Uh, we'll pass that on him tomorrow, and he can respond to council accordingly. Thank you. Okay, uh, for myself. Um, so last week, I had the privilege to attend the Wounded Warriors um, event in in Lanceville at the Legion. It was uh, uh, well attended, and uh, they had a warm reception for the. Wounded Warriors team, so it was a wonderful um, gathering there, and uh, had the privilege of running the last whatever two hundred feet into the um, into the Legion with uh, the Wounded Warriors runner, as well as the Vice President and President of the Legion. Um, just a note: uh, they managed to raise eighty three hundred dollars for the Wounded Warrior uh, Fund, so it's excellent. It's definitely a worthwhile. Uh, um, cause and, and providing our first responders and more importantly, our, our, even our veterans uh, with mental health services um, that's so greatly needed. So, um, you know, again, thank you to the Legion for hosting and for raising the money. And they managed to have three donors. I'm not going to mention names, to not to embarrass anybody, but the three donors donate a total of $6,100. So, one managed to donate 3,000, another 1,700, and another individual 1,400. So they had some uh, uh, good sizable donations made by three individuals. And, and the other thing is that, you know, now we're slowly coming out of this COVID um, storm. It's, uh, you know, the one thing that had happened uh, for the Legion anyways is, you know, it really hampers their fundraising efforts um, with respect to, uh, you know, COVID and, and the restrictions around it. So um, it was really nice, again, to see uh, individuals stepping up and, and really opening up their wallets to support such a worthy cause. So, and, and uh, it's an excellent event um, every, well, the, two years ago when they last held it, it was the same kind of um, venue and, and having uh, individuals or an individual come up and share their story of uh, how Wounded Warriors has really impacted their life and and in a lot of cases saves lives, um, you know, by giving the necessary uh, mental health care that's required. So again, uh, well done to the Legion and more importantly, well done to the Wounded Warriors um, organization for, um, for doing that important work. Um, so that's the end of my update. Moving along in our agenda, just got to find out where I am here. Got a couple of screens. So we have introduction of late items. So is there any late items to be introduced this evening? None, okay. And uh, any notices of motion? Okay. I have a notice of motion, I'll just read it aloud. Um, this is, I guess the title would be the RDN appointment. So my notice of motion is as follows and uh, through the director codes, I will forward a, a printed copy along to you shortly. That pursuant to the Local Government Act, Council appoints Councillor Ian Savage as the, as the District of Lanceville Municipal Director on the Regional District and Nanaimo Board. And further that pursuant to the Local Government Act, Council appoints Councillor in um, bracket, close brackets to be determined as the District of Lanceville alternate Municipal Director on the Regional District and then I'm on board. So that is my notice of motion and I will forward it, uh, copy on to you Director Coates very shortly. All right, so other than that, um, public clarification, do we have anybody registered for public clarification? 
No, we do not. Okay, thank you. And uh, we have made it through our agenda. I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. All right.